suitable as in any wood shop. Capable of a variety of cuts, curved or straight, and handling a wide variety of stock sizes, the bandsaw will do what most other saws will, and then some. The bandsaw blade is a continuous strip of toothed metal or band running between two wheels. The top wheel applies tension, while the bottom wheel provides power from the motor through a series of pulleys. When the wheels spin around, they move the blade teeth downward, creating the cutting action of the saw. The downward motion also forces the stock against the table, helping to make smooth, accurate cuts. All of this goes just a little faster with the power applied. The guide blocks keep the blade from moving left and right, while the idler wheel keeps the blade from pushing away from us while it's cutting. Both of these are controlled in height, with a lever on the back. By raising and lowering the guard of the bandsaw, we can adjust both for the amount of exposed blade for safety and for the amount of deflection in the blade. As we see with the blade guard high, the blade has a remarkable ability to flex. Under load, it can flex half to three quarters of an inch out of line. So we want to get those guides down as close to the wood as we can in order to keep that blade tracking straight and accurate. While the bandsaw is capable of a remarkable number of kinds of cuts, one of its greatest strengths is the ability to cut curves accurately. I've drawn a line here to show how cleanly the bandsaw can follow it. As we push the wood through the blade, we need to make sure that the blade isn't twisting or turning in the guides. This nice gradual cut should be no problem. Nice and clean. The bandsaw is also great for making freehand curves with no planning. Again, we need to be aware that the blade isn't twisting and that no sparks are happening from the guides above. We should be able to turn a circle of about two inches in diameter with this blade. The thinner the blade, the tighter the curve. Very nice. In order to make deep curved cuts into a piece of wood, we're going to have to make some relief cuts. These long thin cuts into the piece of wood allow the curved sections to pop loose without twisting the blade. Watch what happens after we make these cuts and then try to turn these corners. That's one straight cut. Now let's do a couple more. Now let's watch what happens as we come around. See that piece come loose? As we work our way around, each of those sections will pop out, leaving a clean curve. In order to make straight cuts with the bandsaw, we'll need to attach some sort of fence, either by clamping down a piece of wood, or in this case, using an aftermarket guide. We'll need to square that fence up to be sure it's running parallel to the line of the blade. Once that's locked down, we can start our cut. One of the great things about the bandsaw is all of the force is going down, so the piece will stay where you put it if you take your hands away. So as we near the end of our cut, we can walk around the saw, get our hands totally away from that sharp blade, and pull through from the back to finish the cut. Another way that we can make clean cuts is using the miter fence. It allows us to make cuts perpendicular to those we were just making, as cleanly and accurately. We need to make sure that it's clearing the blade and the guard. It can either be used at 90 degrees to the blade like this, or 
it can be adjusted to any of an almost infinite number of angles. Here I'm setting it for a 45 by moving the stop out of the way and tightening it down. Once again, I check to make sure that it fits, cleanly clearing the blade and the guard. Now we can make clean 45 degree cuts over and over using that guide. In order to cut out a three dimensional object, we'll have to draw the pattern on two different sides of our block. We'll lay that down and cut the first dimension. Notice that I'm using small cuts and making relief cuts before trying to do tight curves. Let's think back for a second to the fact that those teeth are pushing down. The angle that we introduce that duck into the blade now, the tendency of those gear-like teeth to grab and push down is going to be pretty strong. In fact, there's no angle I can approach it from that I can do this. My only option is to reassemble my form in order to make it stable again. A little masking tape, and a little more careful fitting. And our duck is no longer tippy. Now it's just a question of cutting that duck out again in this dimension. Anytime we remove enough that it makes us unstable, we tape it all up again. And cut. And tape. Another technique that we can use to make a three-dimensional object is to literally turn the wood inside out. I'm going to make one long cut down the middle of this, moving back and forth to create some shape. Turn the wood to the bandsaw, and now I cut it again in the other dimension, making the same sort of long lazy curve, or more steep pattern if you so desire. I can now unstack those objects to get one kind of three-dimensional form, or unstack again to get another. All of these techniques should show you how versatile the bandsaw is, and how useful it can be to sculptors, cabinet makers, and other skilled tradespeople.